Our objective in this lesson is to subtract fractions making like units numerically. Here I have the fraction 1 half minus 1 fifth. You'll notice they're not like units. So let's go ahead and make that common denominator. We have 1 half. We're getting equivalent fractions. We'll multiply by 5 and multiply by 5, which is just the other denominator. If we think of multiples of 2, it's 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, and then we do get to that 2 times 5 before anything else. That's why we are using the other denominator. We have 1 times 2 then, and 5 times 2, and then we do that work. For this first fraction, 1 times 5 is 5, and 2 times 5 is 10. So our equivalent fraction for 1 half is 5 tenths, and our equivalent fraction for 1 fifth is 1 times 2, which is 2, over 5 times 2, which is 10. So now that our denominators are the same, and we have like units, we can just subtract 5 minus 2, which is 3, and that is 3 tenths. 3 tenths is in simplest form, because the only thing that we can divide 3 by is 3, and 10 is not divisible by 3. So, our whole equation, read it with me. 1 half minus 1 fifth equals 3 tenths. Here I'm asked to solve 1 and 3 fifths minus 2 thirds. Again, the units are not the same, so our first step is to get like units. I will look at each of these denominators. We've got 5 here and 3 here, and think about multiples. It goes 5, and then 10, and then 15 for that first fraction. And in this case, it's a mixed number. That's the difference between our first problem and this one. And in the second one, we have 3, 6, 9, 12, and 15 for those denominators for multiples of 3. And that first common denominator that we have for those multiples is 15. So to be able to get there from 1 and 3 fifths, Remember to keep that whole number, and then we have 3 over 5 times what? Hmm. It's 5 times 3 to get us 15. Do the same thing in the numerator. Minus 2 over 3 times 3 times 5 to get us to 15. And remember to do the same thing in that numerator. So our whole number, again, stays the same, and then we're just working with that fractional part. Some people might have wanted to put a plus sign in between there. That would have worked as well. So that's 1 plus 9 fifteenths minus 10 fifteenths. And you put an equal sign there as well. In this case, I cannot solve 9 minus 10 fifteenths. So I'm going to reorder this as 9 fifteenths plus 1 minus 10 fifteenths. I'll rewrite one whole as 15 fifteenths, subtract 10 fifteenths from it, and then do not forget the 9 fifteenths, which will equal 9 fifteenths plus 15 fifteenths minus 10 fifteenths which is 5 fifteenths, which will give us our answer, which is 14 fifteenths. So 1 and 3 fifths minus 2 thirds is 14 fifteenths. Now another way to have solved that for the 1 and 3 fifths minus 2 thirds, if we look where we're right here, where it is that we have 1 and 9 fifteenths, we could have made 1 and 9 fifteenths into a mixed number of 24 fifteenths, and then subtracted 10 fifteenths from that. 24 fifteenths minus 10 fifteenths is already 14 fifteenths. And then so again, we took 1 and 9 fifteenths after we made a denominators that were the same and rewrote it as an improper fraction to be able to subtract that would work as well. Here I have 3 and a fourth minus 2 and 2 thirds. You'll notice this time I actually have two mixed numbers. 
3 and a fourth minus 2 and 2 thirds. First thing again is to go ahead and get like units. So I have 3 and 1 fourth times. It goes 4, 8, then 12. That way I know that I can just multiply by the other denominator. Minus 2, 2 thirds. So that's 2 times and 3 times. 4, because I'm using the other denominator, and I know that I'm getting to 12. Continuing to work with that is 3. 1 times 3 is 3. 4 times 3 is 12. That's 3 and 3 twelfths, minus 2 and 8 twelfths. As I continue to work with that, 3 twelfths minus 8 twelfths, hmm, I can't do that. I can take that second strategy that I showed on the previous slide by rewriting this here as an improper fraction. I'm going to need a regroup. 3 times 12 is 36, plus 3 is 39, because each whole is worth 12 twelfths. So that's 39 twelfths. Again, what I did is I rewrote this number here as an improper fraction. Now in doing so, I have minus 2 and 8 twelfths. I can also write 2 and 8 twelfths as an improper fraction. So each whole again is worth 12 twelfths. So that's 2 times 12, which is 24, plus the 8 twelfths, which is 32 twelfths. So I have 39 twelfths minus 32 twelfths, which is equal to 7 twelfths. So 3 and a fourth minus 2 and 2 thirds is equal to 7 twelfths. Here let's look at 3 and a fourth minus 2 and 2 thirds again. This time let's look at a number line and let's go ahead and think about this in another manner. 3 and 1 fourth we can go ahead and break down into 3 put together with 1 fourth. And then in this case we're subtracting 2 and 2 thirds from it. So we're going 3 plus 1 fourth minus 2 and 2 thirds. We can think about it as 1, 2, and 3. So we can think about it instead as 3 subtracting away 2 and 2 thirds. And then so if we are going from 3 and we are subtracting 2 and 2 thirds, fine. We subtract 2 first, that's the minus 2. And then if we subtracted 2 thirds from that, we go 1 third and 2 thirds and subtract 2 thirds from that fine, from 1, right, we would end up with 1 third. So 3 minus 2 and 2 thirds is 1 third. Okay, that's where we'd end up. Now really though, we're supposed to be starting at 3 and 1 fourth, not 3. So really we should be right here, and that'd be 1 fourth. So really, our answer should be 1 fourth more than 1 third. So our answer then is one third plus one fourth. We get a common denominator, just as before. And then one times four is four, that's twelfths, plus three twelfths then is equal to seven twelfths. There is always more than one way to solve a problem and to look at a problem. Here is an opportunity for you to try. Here's 2 and a third minus 1 half. Make sure to try the problem two different ways. So if we have 2 and a third minus 1 half, we want to make sure that we make um, denominators that are the same. We could have chosen 6. Here's 2 and, and 2 6 minus 1 and 3 6. 2 and 2, 6 minus 1 and 3, 6. One of our approaches could have been where it is that we had improper fractions. 2 times 6 is 12, plus 2 is 14, so that would be 14, 6 minus 9, 6. And then we solve that, we would get 5, 6. So one of the answers and one of the approaches is to rewrite each as improper fractions, and then add or subtract, and then make sure to simplify write them back in simplest form. 
we could have used a number line approach and to think about this as 2 and to decompose 2 and a third down into 2 put together with 1 third and then we're subtracting 1 and a half from there and then so we have 2 minus 1 and a half first which is 1 half and then um, we would add together one third with that because our answer should have been one third more than that if we had actually started with two and a third rather than starting from um, two. So getting common denominators, that's times three times two times two times three, three six plus two six, which does equal five six. So there is more than one way. Your method might have been even different than what it is I just showed you here. And that's thinking about this numerically. The big key, of course, is to get like units. Our answer again is 5, 6. One last problem. Here we have 3 and a fifth minus 2 and 3 fourths. If we look at this... First, by breaking apart 3 and 1 fifth, remember 3 and 1 fifth is 3 with 1 fifth, and we think about that number line, and we are looking at 0, 1, 2, and 3, and 4. We're looking at 3 and 1 fifth, that's where we're starting from, but instead of looking at 3 and 1 fifth, which would be here, let's look at if we are subtracting from 3, which have been right here, we subtract 2 first, which is 3 minus 2, because it's 2 and 3 fourths. And then we also subtract 3 fourths from there. 1 minus 3 fourths is just a fourth. But we were supposed to have started from 3 and 1 fifth, or 1 fifth more. Meaning our answer would have been 1 fifth more than 1 fourth. Getting a common denominator, times 5, times 5, times 4, times 4, that's 5 twentieths plus 4 twentieths, which is equal to 9 twentieths. I'll write my answer in here. 9 twentieths is in simplest form, and then so I don't need to do anything else with that. If I use an improper fractions approach, here I'll start with my original equation, minus 2 and 3 fourths. Counting by multiples of 5, it's 5, 10, 15, and 20. Counting by multiples of 4, which is the other denominators, it's 4, 6, 8, 12, 16, and 20. Our common denominator, then, is 20. And in order to get there, we'd multiply by 4 in the numerator for the first one. We would multiply by 5 in the numerator for the other one there. And then we'd add 3 and 4 20ths minus 2 and 15 20ths. Our problem here is that I can't go 4 minus 15 20ths. Otherwise, if I didn't need to regroup, then I don't have to use improper fractions. Each of those holes, that's the three holes there, is worth 20 twentieths. That's why I can go 3 times 20, which is 60 twentieths. Put it together with the 4 to get 64 twentieths, rewriting each of these as improper fractions. Doing that math of the 64 minus 55, I would get... 9, just as I did before for my numerator, and the denominator stays the same, 9 twentieths. Key again is to get like units numerically, and then to do your work and show your work to be able to subtract those fractions properly.